In this video I'll be showing you how to fix Harry Potter and the Diffley Hallows Part 1 on PC. This fix today is brought to you by myself and the rest of my team, also known as Fix Enhancers. This video is for educational purposes only. This fix will provide you with a unlocked frame rate for the game, where you can now select what frame rate you wish to play this game at, a frame rate counter, windowed mode, so you can now play the game within a windowed mode instead of full screen, higher aspect ratios for those of you that want to play on higher aspect ratio monitors, and a higher field of view so you will now have a much much better field of view while playing this game instead of what it used to be in the past this fix will work with all different versions of the game so this is a disc copy as well as a downloadable copy like on origin also anybody using a no cd on their copy it will probably work with this as well so before you go and get the fix i need to explain something very quickly so that everyone understands this regarding our fixes and all of these fixes will be the same going forwards something that might happen with these fixes is when you download it through the browser or potentially depending on what antivirus software you use you might find that the fix might get flagged up now to explain why this happens what our fixes do is they use something called hooks to explain this in a really simple english way for everyone to understand our fix the dol file will basically use a hook in order to edit the code within the normal game in this case the harry potter and the deathly hallows part one exe file where you need to change specific parts this is how you're able to change the code within the exe file so that you can use the custom frame rate within the game so you can edit all that. This is why it will come up like this because of course the average user is not supposed to be using hooks in order to edit exe files. This is why browsers and some antivirus softwares might think this looks a bit suspicious. There is nothing actually wrong with it, these are all false flags. If you come to the first link down in the description it will take you to this website here. This is github, this is where we're hosting all of our fixes and this is the fix for Deathly Hallows part 1. All you have to do once you're on this page here is simply click on this file here hp7fix.zip and then just save that onto your pc somewhere so now that you save the fix onto your pc you now want to move that fix over to the deathly hallows part one install location in the case of this tutorial i've put the fix here on my desktop so what i've done is i've created a separate folder called hp7fix so i'm going to open that up now and then within here you can see i've got the actual downloaded file that we downloaded from the web which is a compressed zip file and i've created another folder here called hp7fix so all you have to do with the zip file that you got from the web is simply right click it and then click extract all and then extract it into the folder you created so then it will come up with something like this once you've done that if you then open up the folder like so you will find all the files here like this you'll find three files with this fix one is a readme which just explains about the fix and what our team has done etc so read that if you would like but the two files that we are actually interested in here and are very important are the d3d9 dol and the d3d9.ini file so you now want to open up your deathly hallows install location make sure you open up to the point where the exe file was located so i've got it over here on the left as you can see simply highlight both of these two files in the fix folder and either do a control c and a control v into the deathly hallows install location or you can just drag and drop so as you can see i've copied the two files over here into my deathly hallows part one install location so now that you have the two files like so you're going to want to open up the ini file once you open up the ini file you will see it like so these are all the options that you're going to be using in order to change certain things within the game so to start off with the first option which is the fps limit so this is obviously the frame rate limit within hp7 bear in mind that hp7's frame rate is normally capped at 30 and you can't go above it obviously with this fix we've got rid of that cap and you can now uncap the game and have it on any frame rate you like i like to add that we've only tested this game all the way through on 120 frames as well as 60 so i have no idea if the frame rate is going to be a bit broken going above 120 frames you will just have to find that out yourselves in order to change the frame rate limit we put it as 60 by default as this is what most people will want to use but if you want to change it to something else like i will be changing it to 120 frames like so as of course that's what i play on so the next option is fps limit mode so this you will either put in a one or a two depending on what you want to choose so this option you guys are going to have to play around and see what works best for you so all you have to do with this option is simply highlight the number and then edit that number to what option you want so either one or two the next option is the display frame rate counter so this is mainly for people that either want to just check that their frame rate is going to the correct frame rate while playing the game or if you're a speedrunner potentially then you might be using this as well this will display a frame rate counter in the top left hand corner of the screen so if you want to turn this on you simply highlight the number and change the zero to a one if you don't want this on you just leave it as zero the next option is force window mode to all the people out there that wish to use window mode instead of full screen mode this is usually either content creators or speedrunners again then all you have to do here is simply highlight the number and 
and change the zero to a one. If you wish to stay in full screen mode, then you simply leave this as zero. The next options down here in force window, these are all different window mode options that you can play around with and choose what you wish to do with them. Now on the right hand side over here, you've of course got all the description of what each one does for you so you can choose exactly what you want to do with each one. I will leave this entirely up to the windowed mode people in order to decide what you wish to do with your windowed mode with these options. So just play around and choose what you wish to use here. And finally, the last option here is the full screen aspect ratio. So this will only be required for users that wish to use a higher aspect ratio than the game supports. So by default, the game supports 16 by 9 aspect ratio. However, if you wish to play with a higher aspect ratio, then you can choose one of the numbers over here on the right hand side with all the other different higher aspect ratios that we support in the fix. Simply highlight the number on the left hand side and change it to the number of the aspect ratio you want to use. Once you put in all the options that you want to use, all you have to do is either press Ctrl S on your keyboard or come up to the top left hand corner here, click file and then click save. Once you've done that, you can then close down the INI file. So now if you boot up the game and start playing it, you should notice that your frame rate will now be set to whatever you've set the frame rate to. Likewise, if you chose a specific aspect ratio or windowed mode, then of course those options should now be applied to the game as well. I'd like to add that myself and the rest of my team are aware of a menu issue in the game where all the menus are a bit sped up at the moment due to the unlocked frame rate. We are currently writing a fix for this so that the menus will all be locked to 30 frames like they once were again, which will then fix the speed issues with them, which they currently have. We are also aware that there is an issue with the frame rate display counter at the moment in HP7, where in cutscenes it currently displays correctly and is yellow like it should be, but in gameplay it then fades into black after being yellow for about a couple of seconds. We are looking into this and we will hopefully have a fix for this quite soon. Obviously when this arrives I will let you know down in the description as well as the pinned comment telling you that this has been updated within the fix and of course you can then go and download the updated fix from the github area. And then finally before ending off this video I am now introducing along with the rest of my team a new system called fix forms. We are going to be putting these out with each fix that we do and the reason we are putting these out is so that you guys can give us feedback on the fixes so we can keep a tab on any issues that might show up when you guys use the fixes. So if you come to the second link down in the description in the pinned comment then you will find the link to this fix form. We do encourage that you take the time to actually fill this in so that you can give us the feedback in order for us to actually improve the fixes. Otherwise that's all there is to this video. I hope you guys found it useful. If you need another fix guide for another game that I've covered there'll be linked to that down in the description as well as the pinned comment. Likewise any questions you might have feel free to leave them and I will try and get back to you as quickly as I can. Otherwise I will see you all in the next fix video very soon. Thank <laughs> you.